Okay, there are special cases when a molecule that contains stereocenters does not have stereoisomers. So we have stereocenters. but let's say more properly, no enantiomer. Now, how is this possible? Well, let's draw a molecule. This molecule has two stereocenters. How do we know there are two stereocenters? Because there are two sp3 hybridized carbons that have four different substituents. These are the sp3. Two centers. So this is two stereocenters. Now, at the least, you would think we ought to be able to draw the, the mirror image of this. So let's draw the mirror image. And uh, so this carbon, then I've got this dot on, is going to be that one. So in the mirror image, the bromine is going to be up. Hydrogen is going to be back. And on this one over here, it's going to be further away from the mirror. So we'll have hydrogen coming up and bromine going back. And there's our mirror image. But what do you notice about this mirror image? This, it is a mirror image, but it's superimposable. And we said superimposable is simply a fancy way for saying it's the same. Well, if two structures are the same, they are not isomers of one another. They are simply the same molecule. So here is a case where the molecule doesn't have, um, the, has stereocenters, but you can't draw an enantiomer. That's kind of odd. How does this happen? How do you recognize that this is going to happen? Well, this occurs when it just so happens that the molecule, despite having a ch two chiral centers, those chiral centers are equal and opposite of one another. And therefore, even though the molecule contains stereocenters, the molecule itself is not chiral. The molecule itself um, contains a plane of symmetry. So the molecule contains a plane of symmetry. Normally, if you have a carbon, sp3 hybridized carbon, with four different substituents, that carbon itself will not have a plane of symmetry. And the, the messed up asymmetric nature of that carbon will throw the entire molecule out of whack. Here's a special case where even though we have stereocenters, they are balanced in the molecule and that balance restores the symmetry and so the molecule has a plane of symmetry. These, um, this is called, these kinds of structures are, are called mesostructures. Mesostructures are molecules, they contain a chiral carbon, but the entire molecule is achiral. A chiral. Not chiral. Okay, so, but however, we can draw stereocenters, stereoisomers of this molecule. If we change one, but not all the stereocenters, so let's leave this one alone. Let's swap the other. Put the bromine in the back and hydrogen in front. Now we have a molecule that doesn't have a plane of symmetry. So th this is a chiral molecule. And we can actually ba -da 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 -da, draw the mirror image and the whole nine yards and the mirror image will be an enantiomer. So it's not as if that the rules of stereochemistry don't come into play. And, and uh, yes, I'm talking, but okay, let's finish our structure. Um, that's Br, that's an H, and that'll be Br and H. And these will be enantiomers because these two structures do not have an internal plane of symmetry uh, d down through the middle of the molecule. There are cases where, so here's a molecule with two stereocenters, and you would say, how many stereoisomers should we have? We should have four. But as it turns out, this has three stereoisomers. 
this violates our um, two to the n rule that we saw before. How many stereo centers should we have? Well, it ought to be two to the number of stereo centers um, is how many stereo isomers we have. In special cases, kind of weird, if the molecule is meso, then you can have, uh, you're going to lose some of your stereo isomers because they're going to be superimposable structures, meaning you're going to regenerate the same molecule.